you guys are going to be shocked by what you're going to see right here this is super funny <laughs> so basically i am peter velen from the movie peter what is the people as you saw in the introduction we're going to be doing something called the face popper using open cv in the kiwi application let's get this video started straight away today's video is sponsored by embol.io embol.io is an ai powered static analysis tool that runs through your code package and finds out all the issues not only that it also gives you eight different metrics that you can improve your code upon and is a very 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 useful tool if you're going to be managing a big package i'm going to be using this embol.io in our current package in this video so make sure to stick till the end and watch me work with this embo.static io tool and you will be able to see how amazingly useful it is that you can also use in your project if that is getting you excited make sure to check the first link in the description where they have a very good free tier package that you can get started with today all right so if you're coming here for the first time we have been doing a lot of interesting videos on open cv and kiwi and trying to put it inside kiwi so in this video i'm going to be sharing as many information as possible uh, in the limited amount that i have and also try talk to you guys in depth about cv2 and things like that so first thing that you need to for this face swapper to work is something called as a d library so d library is a c++ based library that helps in predicting faces much more clearly if you have watched the previous video we did something a very simple version of this face finder using something called as a cascade classifier which is one technique and we're going to be applying a little bit even more complex technique in this one and trying to identify faces so first thing you want to do is just install uh, the dlib which is very simple just say pip install so dlib takes two important things first you need to install uh, cmake and once you do that you also need to install dlib so it'll automatically take care of all of the installation and doing things for you so make sure you run these two commands i've also dropped the useful link in the description uh, if you're running it on uh, windows you will be hitting a few errors when uh, trying to install dlib so make sure to do that as well and follow along all right so a couple of things installed we have the dlib installed we have the cv2 installed as well and we're going to be starting our code right here so what is the technique that you're going to use we're going to be using something called as a face finder so what you need to do with the face finder or also face predictor is you're going to find where a face is from an image and take this face out and try to superimpose it on top of a top of a running video or frame by frame so when you do that you get this smooth kind of a video uh, which looks like a face swapped and it's very funny to look at and also you can do a lot of cool things with that uh, so first thing we're going to do or we're going to start with is to obviously have a couple of import libraries here and like I said you should be or you could have followed me from the first video of the series then all of this code will make sense even if not we just created a very very simple application uh, added some image on top of it and running a cv2 image and we're doing something called a pytesseract using pytesseract identifying uh, text on an image so that's what we did and we also added a lot of cool stuff on top of it but for this one let's uh, import the dloop followed by we'll also import the numpy all right so two things are done and also the next one is that we need to have a source image right we need to take the face from that source and try to uh, have the face alone and then superimpose it on top of another image all right the first thing we're going to do with this is to have a class variable called as image and we'll just say cv2.read image oh sorry i am read these are all basic things that we have been seeing so i'll just quickly go so i already have an image of my favorite uh, actor his name is rajini and this is his face so i'm going to be trying to take this face out and putting it on my face i don't know how i'm going to look anyway let's get started okay this is the image that i have charging dot i think it's a jpg right yeah jpg i had tried out multiple images and this one looked really cool all right make sure to have it properly indented next thing i'm gonna do is to convert it into grayscale all of this is again a basic technique so use the cv2 again cv2 dot cvt color and you're gonna say self dot image and we'll say cv2 dot color bg r2 gray all right done next thing we're going to do is call something called as a mask the mask is going to be a simple uh, black image that is going to just act as a background for us it's just, it's not going to have any useful information so just you can use the numpy uh, numpy will be basically you can call it import numpy as np right and you can use the numpy and create a zero like so we say zero like uh, it'll just create an empty empty image which is going to be a very dark image so what this is going to do is just 
take the face alone out of it and we can now put it on the mask and mask will have only the face portion alone i'll try to show it as we go along and we we'll also have uh, will be like short press for time also i'll try, try to quickly write things and then explain as well all right so mask is created now now is going to be the task so what we're going to do the phase one is we're going to take and do something called as a detector we're going to pass it through a detector that will basically work uh, uh, by identifying where the face is all right so let's quickly create a class variable called as detector itself i created somewhere here so we call it detector is equal to dlib dot you can call a method called as get frontal face detector now this get frontal face detector is going to be the detector and there's something called as a predictor also you can do and that's going to actually predict where the face is or what is the shape of the face now you can set shape predictor and we got to have pass a, a file which is going to be useful for us to act as the predictor now this is a dat file also link in the description it's supposed to automatically download and work but it did not work for me so i actually had to manually download the dlib file so just put predictor 68 face land marks dot dat all right so this is going to be like a basic one so this is going to be a dlib file we're going to have the predictor we're going to have the detector all right let's go down okay now is going to be the game changing part we're going to call something called as a faces a video or photo can have multiple faces right so we'll try to take let's assume this is one face but we still have to call the detector and the detector will find multiple faces so just pass the gray image to it image gray always make sure to have a grayscale image only and i will just run on the faces the faces is going to be basically an a list so we'll say off for face and faces we'll call something called as landmarks these landmarks are nothing but a simple way of identifying what or where is the connecting point of my face now i said um, there is a very detailed and interesting video uh, which is going to be very very useful for us to understand all of this in a channel called as pi source i took most of this inspired this is inspired from pi source but uh, also adapted for kiwi so it's not like a copy paste to work here so i try to understand as much as possible i can and adapt it for kiwi and uh, i would highly recommend if you have time to watch that as well so a shout out to that channel and also the creator of that for explaining it in much in depth uh, probably you can if you have any doubt you can watch that all right so let's start with the landmarks part the landmarks part is is going to be the predictor part so the face is taken and once the face is identified we're going to identify something called as the landmark the landmark is that i'm not going to do much of my uh, action with my forehead right everything is going to start from my eye line only my can move my eyebrows i can move my nose i can move my mouth and cheeks and stuff stuff like that so everything from my eyebrow to my chin can be moved and that's what i want to identify using or i i want to predict from the face that i have so you can just say uh, landmarks is going to be the predictor image gray and from the image gray i'm going to predict the face and the landmark is going to be taken from that now let's run something called as the uh, we, we're going to identify xy points from that we can just say run it to 68 because there can be 68 points that you can get from it and landmarks or that part of n dot x y is equal to landmarks dot part of uh, n dot by so we're going to take a couple of landmarks and now what we're going to do is create a class variable we're going to create an empty class variable every single time because this landmark is going to be uh, the the base layout or layer for us to work on or superimpose on so just add it to the landmarks landmarks point that append we'll put it as a set so it's appended it's going to be appended every single time and we're done with it we have run the logic for finding or predicting the uh, the landmark points now the faces are predicted and once you got get the faces we're going to create the points itself which just can be an np array or numpy array run it through the landmark points let's call it as points useful because it's going to be collection of points and we need to have it in an integer format you should not have it in a float format so it's going to be an mp array it's going to create an uh, numpy array of the format of int32 int and it's going to use the landmark points every single time now, once we have the points 
I said uh, three techniques are there, right? The first technique is identifying the face. That's why you're reducing the D-loop. The next thing you're going to do is once you get the face, you're going to do something called a convex hull. The convex hull is basically uh, the, the portion of your face alone below your forehead that's possible by the landmark points that you've gotten. And from the points, you can find the convex hull of the face. That's what you're going to try to do. Just say convex hull is equal to cv2 dot convex hull because cv2 presents itself you can create a convex hull using the points now it should be a numpy array so once you have the uh, convex hull it's time to now put it on the mask right we created a very simple or empty uh, image file just put cv2 dot fill convex mask convex poly and you can just say self dot mask now mask is going to be like an empty black image and you can just put the uh, convex hull itself that we created from the previous line and color is going to be 255 or black color all right so we've created the points we have taken the convex hull from it and the convex hull is now it's imposed on the mask now mask is going to be just the face alone uh, what i'm going to do now is introduce a technique called as delaunay triangulation technique delaunay triangulation technique is basically to uh, split your entire face or just below your eyebrows into multiple triangles now once you have the triangles you can now uh, create or you can easily transport this triangle information alone to another place and reconstruct your face from that that's very very useful and this is also a very important technique in identifying terrains because uh, any terrain can be split into multiple triangles and there's a complex uh, computational geometry behind it which i don't know much in depth to explain but the base or the top layer is that it's a very simple and useful technique that can be useful for finding terrains our face is similar to a terrain we have cheeks that is going up and down then there's like a dip in my uh, jaw and things like that, right? So you can do the same technique here. So now to write uh, the Delaunay triangulation. That's what you're going to do here. The technique states that first you need to find the bounding rectangle. So bounding rectangle is going to be from the convex hull. So you have the convex hull. You're going to be found, finding the bounding rectangle first. It's going to be like, say, this is going to be the rectangle or my face starts from here. This is going to be the rectangle. Now I need to uh, avoid or remove everything that is not a face. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to first of all subdivide it uh, into multiple sub arrays and I'll say subdiv 2D and I'll just pass this rectangle. Rectangle is now subdivided into multiple subdivisions. Now subdivision is also now inserted. I'm going to insert my landmark points. Now landmark points is again from the previous step and that's what we did right here, right? We found the landmark points for the face. And the next is going to be the triangles. Now triangles are basically from the subdivided triangle list. All right. Technique as well. So this from the array, we can say triangles. D type or it's going to be a NP dot in 32. Always do that. So quickly explain what is happening here. So we have found the rectangle or bounding rectangle of the convex hull and subdivided into multiple rectangles. Now in the subdivision also include the landmark point which is going to be the face for us. And in the in the uh, using the subdivided uh, landmark points, we can now get the triangles. Now that's what this method is going to do. So once you get the triangles, you form the triangle uh, list or the NumPy array and you're going to be running or finding individual points from this triangle and inserting it to uh, a variable. So quickly do that. It's going to take some time. All right, guys, so I quickly wrote a few lines here, which I want to explain as, as clear as possible. So we have the triangles now. If you're following me till now, you have the triangles. And what I'm going to do is create three different points. The points are going to be 0 and 1, 2 and 3, and 4 and 5. So why exactly are we doing that? Once we get the points, uh, once we get the four, five point from individual triangles, we can then now create something called as the index of the index of the NumPy array. And once you get the index of the NumPy array, it will be very, very useful for us to form of the triangle itself in another place that's why i said about transporting triangles right so how do you transport the triangles i've created another simple array and i've put the locations of the triangle alone that we need to consider now i'll try it um, you can follow me if you if you follow me till now you'll understand that we have a convex hull 
the convex hull has a rectangle and the rectangle has triangles in it right now we need to understand what are the points which is going to be the face what are the points which is going to be outside the face so that's what is exactly happening here we have caught in the triangle we're extracting the triangle we are finding the places or the numpy array's position where the triangle is basically present and then now using that information to be transported to the other side this is going to be the technique that you're going to use on the other uh, video as well or the other frame as well so just quickly write that down and you can find all of this code working code in the github repository i put the link in the description so time to write the same technique again this is for an, an image so if i show the image you will find it for yourself just quickly run this and show the image to you guys uh, possibly right here i just put um, self dot parse image right and this portion here after this is done right here all right so i'll just put uh cv2 dot i am show i'll just say rajni mask and i'll show the mask alone self dot So we should basically have the face alone. So that's time to run this. Let me run it. Alright, okay, guys. So quickly run the convex hull portion alone, and you'll understand how the mask works basically. So here is the image. So the image is this on the left, and there's a mask for it created on the right. So what exactly are you trying to, or what exactly is being implied from this? So you can find that the position of the image is not straight. It's somewhat like this, right? It's like this. And even then we are able to find the mask. Once you get the mask out, you can now superimpose your image and you'll be able to find the face alone. So that's where pretty much what you've done. So if now transported all the information we need about this face, to the um, variable called as the indexes triangle. And this is indexes triangle can now be transported to the other side where we can now write all of the logic that we need. So I'm gonna be using the same technique here, same technique for my face as well, and try to remove this portion out. So one, once I masked out this portion, I can take the image mask and superimpose it on my face, right? So let me do that. I, it's gonna be involving the same technique again. I'll write that, I'll come back to you guys and explain what is happening. Alright guys, so we completed that portion as well and this is what is this is how it is looking till now. Same technique like I said, you now have information in the load video about every single frame. Uh, that's what the CV2 video capture is doing, which is doing it right here. So I'm loading it from my face, which is going to be the main camera that I have right here. So once that is done, I'm loading the video and taking it frame by frame and doing the same techniques again. So I'm converting it to grayscale, making creating a mask. And once I create the mask, I'm able to now create, use the detector to find the face. And if the face is available, then I'm right, uh, running it through the predictor, finding my landmark points. The convex hull is also created. Awesome, right? Now, once you we have the triangulation from the first phase. Now, using the triangulation from the first phase, you're going to try to understand where my second phase is and try to connect the points. So, from the triangular triangle indexes that we had right here from the from the previous method, we are now able to run through the triangle index and loop through the landmark points which we have again as a class variable. So basically triangulating the first phase like I've mentioned here. And once the triangulation is completed, we are now able to find the bounding rectangle and using the bounding rectangle, we, we are able to take something called as the cropped triangle. So again, all of this is this code uh, will make sense if you are trying to write it and trying to run it on your own. So next technique is triangulation of the second phase. The downwise triangulation is happening again and we have successfully triangulated the second phase as well. Uh, okay, so we've gotten two images, masked it and now we're going for the face swap. So again, you have the mask, head, head is removed, face alone is required. And once you get that, we are going to be using the main method or main, uh, main method called as a seamless clone. The seamless clone takes the result. The result is nothing but the two images that we have added. The second image, the second image without the head and uh, the center face of the second image. And you're gonna say it's gonna be a mix mixed clone. Now, once you've done that, it's actually trying to uh, correct all the pixels around it and making sure that the that facial texture is same and also, also does not make it look like bad. So the, once that is done, you're gonna be creating the buffer 
and this is the same technique that you've been seeing for so long in the previous three videos so create the buffer put it through the texture and create a blit buffer and put it to the image.texture so all of this is done already the code above it is what we actually took and wrote all right time to run this and uh, see how it happens a lot of code has been written might not you might not understand everything of this and maybe it's required that you understand a simple uh, or maybe a little bit of computational geometry as well all right time to run this let's run this application to see how it looks like might be shocking right you guys are going to be shocked by what you're going to see right here. This is super funny. <laughs> so basically, I am Peter Valen from the movie Peter. Uh, it's, if you guys are seeing this, it's actually really, really funny. Now, you have a superimposed image that is actually able to speak. And when I speak, it's also moving. The jaw and everything is looking really, really good, right? So... Hi guys, how's it going? This is Peter Valen. So hopefully this video is helpful for you guys. And I mean, it's really, really good to look into it. And you can do a lot of things like this as much as you want to. Take any image that you want and you can done, do this as much as you want to. All right, so that was really, really funny. So time to uh, run this code again through our embol.io static analysis tool to find out what are the missing things that we have. Um, make sure to do that before you push your code because that way it makes sure uh, makes your entire repository clean, uh, devoid of any errors and minor misses that you always do. Always do not go with the anti-pattern like you, you guys don't try to over engineer if you even if you over engineer don't worry embold is there to help so let me push this code to the github repository we will run it through the embold and see what is happening all right so here is the embold uh, if you haven't signed in already make sure to sign in uh, sign up and once you sign in it's very simple you already have or i have already linked my application or the embold account to the uh, github repository it takes you to the github repository itself and just sign in with github and that's pretty much it now you can see all your previously run uh, your your uh, uh, scan i just remove this scan to show that uh, how your entire repository works let's right, so go to your repositories and you can say it says just now and that's pretty much because so i just pushed the code four minutes ago so i'll just go here choose my repository you can find that i have all these are public repositories and all of these public repositories are free to use so watch that to lose right and uh, just add repositories to embold and it will start scanning it's going to take some time uh, before it to scan so let's wait for it to scan wait for the scan to complete i'll come back and discuss with you guys what are the key metrics that you can look forward to all right so pretty much the entire line is completed or the entire scanning is completed and you can see that it's it's almost easy and it's identifying that 100 percent of this code is actually uh, python so what I, what it gives you is an overall rating and the overall rating is dependent on multiple information and you will be seeing what that exactly so it scanned about 291 uh, LOC is so the lines of code and probably not much right so what I'm really interested in, uh, in is looking at the efficiency efficiency is, is basically uh, less anti-pattern less code issues and less vulnerabilities so it says that uh, the efficiency is about 87 87 points out of 100 and I'm very very happy with that the next thing that I also look into is the functionality um, which is pretty much good it's 75 and usability usability is very very less because it's identified a lot of lot of different issues and uh, 14 issues are affecting this KPI now I'm very interested to look into what exactly these are I'll just click on it and it gives you what are the different issues that are out there or uh, within your code package it is actually finding few issues with the smilefinder.py which we wrote in the previous video and you can do is just look into what are the code issues that you're having in the current file that we wrote which is the face whopper.py just go here line too long it says line too long and that's pretty much true because it's uh, too big of a line and it's actually going to be very very difficult for us to maintain it as a package and there's a line to long issue coming multiple times in the, that uh, that class file so you can remove it and you can correct it now this is very very interesting to look into now what you can also look into is the medium issues so you can just go to your medium issues and you can just uh, yeah medium issues are coming up right here smilefinder.py okay this is something that i want to look into it says that the uh, the image frame or this is the image frame that you have can be defined outside the init and instant as attributes is defined outside the init method so this is actually to help you uh, increase your robustness in particular that's also is given so you can actually do that 
to improve your basically your code package and there aren't much of a red issues and if there are red issues i'll definitely go in and fix it for the uh, immediately and it's also not found any anti-pattern anti-pattern is something that i'm very very cautious about to not do over engineering and just create something that is going to be very very difficult for us to maintain and also be very less secure all right now the important thing that i also really like about is the duplication which is able to find duplication if you have say 20 000 30 000 lines of code uh, package to maintain there will be definitely some dupl duplication out there so i've uh, cautiously pushed few packages for a few pi files with duplication and is able to find it very clearly as well the next one is the component and it also gives you an overall uh, the rating for the component as well itself and the, the task file that or the pi file that we wrote today has gotten an overall rating of 0.57 amazing thank you so much and individually you can also find what are the different things that you can correct and you just go here and it says that is a medium difficulty move it outside the init it's just shouting at my face that move it outside the init all the class variables can be done that way helps you keep keep it clean and also make sure to uh, make sure to not over engineer all right so this is pretty much what i wanted to show you guys it's very very interesting i just fall in love with this tool it's also very it's it's free why waste your time just click the first link in the description below and you can just uh, take it and run it on your code free for all public repositories and up to 20,000 lines of code for your private repository. All right, so make sure to do that and time to summarize for us with this video. Thanks again to the sponsor, mbold.io. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you liked this, like this video. Like I said at the start of this video itself, this is very complex stuff that you did today. And most of you guys might have understood it. Most of you guys might have found it very, very difficult. You do not worry, it's nothing complex out there. It's everything's understandable. So you guys have the link to the original author of this code itself in the description and also link to my github repository where you can take and write it for your kiwi application that the old one is to basically superimpose two images uh, what i've done is adapted it and write and written it for the uh, the the image and video that we have so it's very fun to look at right so hope you guys did like this video don't forget to like give it a like and subscribe as well let me see you guys in the next video until then it's bharat peace out have a super awesome day